Questions on morphology? Seems to be a lot of questions about both. <laughs> we left looking at syntax, and the first lesson about syntax, the study of the arrange, how the arrangements of words form sentences, the first lesson about syntax was that a lot of our knowledge about which are possible arrangements of words into English sentences and which aren't boils down to the part of speech that words belong to. And, and, and as a consequence, what we, what we started doing is looking at those strings of words that cohere into English sentences and looking not at the words themselves but at the parts of speech that those words belong to and just simply recording what we find. <clears throat> We got so far last time as to characterize sentences as being made up of two groups, uh, the first of which always has a noun in it, and the second of which always has a verb in it. And these two groups are called phrases, and these two particular ones are named after the one thing they must always have, <coughs> noun phrase, verb phrase. <laughs> we ended by looking at at uh, examples which show us something about what that second group looks like, the verb phrase. And that's what this slide was about. So what we see here is in blue examples of these groups of words that form a verb phrase, that form the second part of this sentence. And this, this list here shows us that uh, a verb phrase can have just a verb in it. It can also be a verb followed by a, a single preposition or it can be a verb followed by a preposition that's followed by something that can also start a sentence, a noun phrase, something that has a noun in it, and, and so on down this list. And what I did, you'll remember, is I just recorded what we saw with one of these rules, so-called phrase structure rules. So this rule in particular tells you what this second grouping can consist of. It always starts with a verb. That can be the only thing it has, but if it has more, the rest follows, and that more can be a noun phrase, it can be a preposition, or it can be a preposition followed by a noun phrase. And if more than one of those things exists, that's the order they fall in. Noun phrase will come before the preposition, for instance. Okay? That's what we saw last time. Any questions about, about that? Sir? Is there any way to distinguish? First, I was a little bit confused when you were writing like N, P, V, P, because I thought you were saying a verb, preposition, noun. Oh, I see. I see. Yeah. So, uh, so the yeah the so the the question is. Well, look here. Why am I why am I not reading this? A sentence can be made up of a noun followed by a preposition followed by a verb followed by a preposition. After all, I'm using p to represent preposition elsewhere, and here I'm not using p in that fashion. Uh, yeah, that's a good point. I. Uh, mm, what I've hoped is that spacing alone will disambiguate the meaning of P in my formulas. But that hope may be futile. To sound like a Borg for a moment. Yeah? So, yeah. I'll just I'll always try and cram these P's that don't mean P next to the thing that they are phrases for. All right. Mm -hmm. Good. And I, I showed you that a, a sort of like another way of representing these phrases, so these groupings of words, and actually this way is more informative, is to use the familiar, they're called trees, the familiar graphs like these that show groupings. We've used these for syllables, we've used these for morphology, and now we're going to use them again for syntax. So this one in particular says, this sentence here has these two phrases in it, like all sentences must. The first, it consists of just one thing, and that's a noun. And the second consists of two things, the first of which is of verb scares, and the second of which is another phrase. In this case, a phrase that's made of two things, the first of which is a determiner, the second is a noun. Uh, that's one of the possibilities sketched out by this rule. Okay. Today we're going to muck around with these rules until we finally get the ones that are as close to truth as this class will ever get. Uh, and so I, I will take you on that journey today. 
but what I want to tell you is that the skill you should acquire at this portion of the course is figuring out how to group words using diagrams like these into parses, we call them. Okay, that's the skill that you'll have to acquire. And to do that, you'll need probably to memorize the rules that we end up with today and to practice lots and lots and lots with those rules parsing sentences, giving structures to them. It takes some time. Uh, our homework assignment next week will give you a chance to practice that. Um, and I'll try and give you practice with that uh, in the classes that follow as well. This is a skill like transcribing. So it's a lot like learning the IPA and training your ears to hear things. It's a little easier than that as you have to remember less. It's a little harder than that in that it's very unclear oftentimes what you're looking at. Okay? So uh, this is your big task for the remainder of this course. Learn how to parse. These are the rules we ended up with last time that describe the sort of groupings I, I, I suggested were there. And we should add to that other rules. In particular, if we look at these rules, you'll see that uh, every time there's a preposition, that, that there are certain cases where a preposition and a noun phrase come in always together. And that's not an accident. Those two things also make a phrase. Uh, they are a grouping. So here's some examples of that. The kid in the class, preposition followed by noun phrase. Here's one of these groupings, one of these phrases. That dude there sucks. Uh, that's just a preposition. Okay? Jerry rocks out. That's just a preposition. Jerry stood in the room. That's a preposition followed by a noun phrase. These guys all have a characteristic place inside sentences that's the same. These guys are all phrases. They're all groupings. They're called prepositional phrases because in all of them there is a preposition. And so we'll add to our rules this. A prepositional phrase is always a preposition. And optionally, remember that's what these parentheses mean, optionally following the preposition may be a noun phrase. And I'll change the rules I had earlier now, the rule for noun phrase and verb phrase, to reflect the fact that I've decided that those cases that have prepositions in them are parts of these phrases, these prepositional phrases. Okay? So now a verb phrase, according to this rule, is made up of at most three things. The first is always a verb and that's obligatory. The next two are optional. The first of them is a noun phrase. The second, a prepositional phrase. Sir? But the noun phrase can include a prepositional phrase, right? It can, indeed. In fact, that's what this says. Yes. Oh, dear. Here's an example now. Using this new uh, innovation, the prepositional phrase of a sentence. So, the big kid stands on the desk. Two groups of words, the first a noun phrase. This noun phrase has three things in it, a determiner, adjective, and noun. There they are. This verb phrase has two things in it. The first a verb, always a verb. The second a prepositional phrase. Now, two things in that one. The first a preposition, always a preposition. And in this case, a noun phrase that follows. All right. So there's a series of groupings of phrases. And now I'll show you another series of groupings of phrases that, um, well, that have certain similarities in them. And, and these similarities we're going to end up recording in a special way. It turns out that it's, very po it's possible for a verb phrase to be more than just a verb followed by the junk that can be in verb phrases. It's also possible for a verb phrase to contain two verb phrases, as in this example. And that possibility arises if the word and is between those two verb phrases. So in this example, the sentence is elves eat durian and drink milk, uh, drink oil. These are each drink oil. How odd is that? Um, these are both verb phrases. They both fit the pattern that we've seen verb phrases have. Do you know what durian is? What is it? It's, this, um, it's a fruit that commonly grows in like, the Southeast Asia. And my friend in Malaysia eats it. And it is known for a particular really strong smell that people say is either like garbage or rotting something or garbage and rotting something. And it's it smells like shit. Yeah. yeah. It smells so strong you can't take it on like planes and stuff. 
Yeah. And it's really spiky and can hurt you on the outside. Yeah. Beware the durian. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, so we want to reflect this, and I'll do that by adding a rule that says not only may a verb phrase look the way we've seen them look, but also they can look like this. They can be two verb phrases with the word and between them. Okay. Hmm. Something very similar happens to noun phrases. So it's possible for some noun phrases to look like two other noun phrases with the word and between them. And that's the case in this example. Elves eat little fingers and large toes. Um, these are each noun phrases. They have nouns in them preceded by adjectives. That's one of the things this rule says make a noun phrase. And what we have here is, well, one, you know, two of these strung together with and following eat. So we'll want to allow noun phrases to also include these sorts of things. Uh, and so we'll add to our, our bevy of rules about noun phrases this one. Okay? A noun phrase can be the word and flanked on either side by another noun phrase. And the same thing is true for prepositional phrases. So, as in this example, elves eat in a Russian under bridges, what we have here is a prepositional phrase that's actually two prepositional phrases, as in the other examples, with and between them. Okay? So again, we'll want to write a new rule for prepositional phrases, here it is, that reflects this possibility. Okay. Actually, the truth is that I could keep doing this for every single phrase I teach you. Indeed, I could do this for every single word as well. There are sentences like, uh, the man and woman, two nouns being conjoined by an, being brought together by and as well. In fact, the generalization seems to be this. If there are two things in a syntactic representation, two phrases, two words, there's another one of those things, phrase or word, that can be constructed from those two by sticking and in between. Okay? It's like a general procedure for making new phrases or words. And uh, I'll record that if I could only find my clicker ah, by writing this rule. Okay. So this rule says anything, so think of this alpha as a variable ranging over anything, a word, a phrase of any kind. Anything can be two other of those very same things with and in between. Mm -hmm. So here's an example of, of that working for noun phrases and verb phrases. Is it clear? So this is kind of like a, well, a meta rule, a rule of rules, a rule that describes a whole class of rules. And these things are called coordinations. And the word and is called conjunction. Okay. Sir? Um, you have an adjective and a prepositional phrase, like John is blue and under the weather. Yeah, so a uh, question. What about John is blue, that's an adjective, and under the weather, that's a prepositional phrase. So here, and has on either side of it different things, an adjective and a prepositional phrase. Um, um, Never ask me a question again. Yeah, no, okay, is that, can we, yeah. Very good. Uh, uh, that case is, uh, that case is particularly difficult. As, 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 it, as it happens, that particular example, it looks like two different things are being brought together, but it's not true. Um, the same thing is being brought together. For me to show that to you, and I, I would show it to you, for me, uh, for me to actually utter sentences that are complete and well-formed to you by way of answer, I would have to teach you more about, uh, about sentence structure than I presently can. Uh, okay, so it's a good counterexample. I mean, I think that's a good example, uh, and there will, you know, if you think about it, you can find others like it. Um, and we, we would have to sit and really think about those to see what's going on in them. 
Um, so one of the ways I'm going to lie to you today in, in class is I'm going to tell you to shut up. Yeah, yeah. So is it okay? Yeah, no. Oh, okay. I, I'm sorry you shut up. I feel bad about using that word. Okay. Yeah. So the, yeah, that's going to be a limitation. All right. We're not done. There are other phrases in English. Actually, there's another way in which verb phrases can look. And uh, that's what we're going to see in, in these examples. A verb phrase can be, and here that's what this red rule is recording, a verb phrase can have in it another verb phrase if preceding it is a specialized kind of verb. English is very odd, actually, in having these specialized kinds of verbs. Uh, we call them auxiliary verbs. Um, Mrs. Trigg in my third grade class taught me two years in a row, because that's how long it took me to get through third grade, that these are called helping verbs. I don't bear any malice towards Mrs. Trigg um, at all, none whatsoever, though I think of her every day. And here are some examples. Uh, can, has, is, did, should, will. These are all verbs that belong to this specialized class. And here's an example of one of them deployed in a sentence. Uh, Sally can eat marbles. So here we've got one of these verbs, I'll call it an auxiliary or an aux for short, followed by a regular old garden variety, you see it all the time, VP, eat marbles. So uh, I've warned you now about durian, and I hope this will warn you about Sally. Okay. So uh, here's our second rule, Yeah, second way a verb phrase can look. Okay. Um, and now uh, we're going to encounter a certain kind of sentence, actually. Uh, these sentences don't stand alone, but stand inside larger sentences. And uh, they are uh, typically preceded by a word that belongs to a part of speech that I'll call complementizer. So here are some examples of those words, if, whether, that, and some others. Okay. These sentences look like this. They, they, they start with this word and they follow with a normal garden variety sentence of the sort that we've been talking about, ones that are made up of these two phrases, noun phrase, verb phrase. These are called complementizer phrases because usually the complementizer is obligatory. And one of the places they can be is, well, as the first group of a sentence, and that's what we're seeing here. So this sentence starts with, that elves sing and continues with the verb phrase made up of just this verb, sucks. Okay. This could be any sentence whatsoever. That dogs bark, that cats eat dogs, that Sally eats marbles, uh, that elves eat little fingers, and so on. Okay? Complementizer phrase. And another place we see, so now we've got two ways in which sentences can look. They always have verb phrases as their second grouping, but the first grouping now can be either a noun phrase or one of these fancy complementizer phrases. And another place we see a complementizer phrase is directly after certain verbs, as in this example. So she, that's the noun phrase, and the verb phrase starts with the verb said, and what follows that, well, is one of these things, something that starts with a complementizer that and continues with a garden variety sentence like Elves sing. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, the word that is a complementizer. The word, different word, that is a determiner, as found, for instance, in that lousy dog. There are two words that. One is a determiner, followed by a noun. Another is a complementizer, followed by a sentence. This will be a very large pain in your behind. Beware of it. Okay? So when you see the word that, two possibilities. Complementizer phrases. Mm -hmm. Complementizer phrases can also be found inside noun phrases. Here's an example. So this sentence ends with a verb phrase, disgusts me, are its two parts. It starts with a noun phrase, the first member of which is this determiner, though, the second member of which is this noun notion, and now following that noun, 
is a sentence preceded by a complementizer, in this example, that. These guys can be inside noun phrases too, so we'll change our rule for noun phrases to add that possibility. Uh, now there are two possible things that can follow a noun, a prepositional phrase and a complementizer phrase. Sir? Yeah. Is that your friend? The one to your right? Oh, good. I thought maybe you had. Yeah. Yeah. So the that in that guy, you know, like that friend of yours, that's the determiner that. Yeah. Um, the that that's found in I said that. No. <laughs> I don't know what that that is. Say, I think that that guy has an ugly shirt or something. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think that that guy has an ugly shirt. The first that is a complementizer because following that that is this that guy has an ugly shirt, and that guy has an ugly shirt, that's something shit, that is a sentence. Yeah, so that's a that that's followed by, oh good God, a whole sentence, so it's a complementizer that. But the that that follows that that, that that is a determiner, the that that's in sh that shirt. Was that clear? <laughs> Phew. Okay. All right, good. So these are basically the kinds of things we're going to look at. These are the sorts of sentences that we'll have, uh, we'll have parses for. But the rules I taught you actually have mistakes in them. And now I'm going to show you those mistakes and then correct them. Okay? So here's the first of those mistakes. Right now, our rule for verb phrases says, uh, a verb phrase can start with a verb, and following that, there are these options. One of them is a prepositional phrase. But, and here's an example of that. So this sentence has a verb phrase that starts with the verb walked, and following it is the prepositional phrase into the room. Okay? But actually, verb phrases can have hmm, more than one prepositional phrase in them. Like, for instance, she walked into the room past the table. This is a preposition here, this particular past. Um, here we've got two prepositional phrases following the verb, okay? And, and so this rule is just wrong. This rule says there can only be one. So we should change it. Maybe we should just, well, add one. <laughs> uh, that would seem reasonable. So this would be the way we would parse this new sentence. So this verb phrase has a verb. It's here, it's walked. And it's followed by two prepositional phrases, just like this new rule says it can be. The first into the room, the second past the table, but that isn't quite sufficient either as it's possible for there to be a third prepositional phrase like behind the sofa. In fact, there can be a lot of prepositional phrases. That's what the sentences in this series are. They're just the sentence I showed you with another prepositional phrase tacked on at the end. And I can make sentences like these increasingly long by just well, just adding a prepositional phrase at the end. Mm -hmm. So how many prepositional phrases can there be in a verb phrase? You want to guess? Anyone? Ma'am? I think you can just keep going forever. I can't. Do you know why? I will die. Yeah. yeah. I, People tell me this over and over again. Sometimes they even tell me when. Uh, <laughs> and it's always far too soon. Yeah. But if I didn't die, could I do it? I think, yeah. So what stops me from, from saying a sentence that has an infinity of prepositional phrases at the end? Well, if nothing else, my death. Okay. You know, probably I'd, I won't have to die for me to stop. Like, I might get hungry. Yeah, so hunger. In fact, I might get thirsty first. So thirst. 
Also, by the way, I could get bored. <laughs> I could lose my voice. Probably, you know, if we think about the things that prevent me from saying a sentence with an infinity of prepositional phrases at the end, they're all things that have to do not with my verb phrase, but with me. <laughs> yeah? Well, or if you're holding the gun that ends my life, you! <laughs> yeah? Which would... So, um, what we think we want to do is let our syntax allow for an indefinite number of, of prepositional phrases. I mean, how would we say when exactly I could end? Right? It doesn't have to do with my verb phrases, it seems, but rather to do with, you know, good sense. Um, so let's allow this rule to have an infinity of prepositional phrases following the verb. Of course, what's in my head is a rule that's finite in its statement. I, I, may, I may have an infinity of prepositional phrases that could come out of my mouth, potentially, but I know my head cannot hold an infinity. It's very, 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 very big, but not that big. We must find a way of writing this rule down so that it doesn't have to be infinitely long and yet still characterize an infinity. And here's the way we do that. This rule. We just give up and write a whole new rule for a verb phrase. What this rule says is that a verb phrase can be followed by a prepositional phrase. Just one. But because this is a verb phrase, and these two things make a verb phrase, this can start with a verb phrase, be followed by a prepositional phrase. And because this is a verb phrase, this can be a verb phrase that's followed by a prepositional phrase. Do you see? This rule says, essentially, that a verb phrase can have inside it the very thing that it introduces. Here, a prepositional phrase. These rules are said to be recursive. That's their property. That's the property of self-reference that's giving us this effect. And so now, verb phrases that have prepositional phrases in them, according to this rule, look like this. They start with verb phrases. In this case, it's a verb phrase that has just the verb walked in it. And they're followed, in this case, with a prepositional phrase. And if you want to, they'll look like that. This verb phrase has a prepositional phrase preceded by a verb phrase. And this verb phrase now has more than just a verb in it. It has a prepositional phrase preceded by a verb phrase. And if you want three, it'll look like that and so on. Do you, you see how it goes? Are you all with me? CPs are the same. So, I could show you that it's possible for a verb phrase to have not just one complementizer phrase following the verb, not just two, but as many as you like. In this example, the first is that it's okay. She said that it's okay. The second is when you want. The third is if you ask nicely. These are all those sentences that start with complementizers, complementizer phrases. And so we should change our rule for verb phrases so that just like prepositional phrases, they are introduced with a rule that allows these things to be preceded by another instance of a verb phrase, allowing for these sorts of structures. All right. Okay. All right, and now I'm going to show you that a very similar problem arises when we consider adjectives inside noun phrases. So right now, our rule for noun phrases lets there be a noun preceded by two things. Both of them are optional. One of those is an adjective. And when both are present, the adjective follows the determiner. Mm -hmm. 
Right now, we have a way of characterizing what happens here. So this noun phrase, the big elf, determiner, noun, and there's one adjective between the two. But all the other of these sentences, this rule doesn't allow, and this rule just says you can only get one adjective between these two guys. And in fact, you can get lots. The big, fat, lazy, smelly, shy, incautious elf. We need a way then, and this is the same kind of series of sentences. I, I could keep making longer sentences just by adding an adjective in this position, and the only thing that would stop me is, well, that damn elf, probably. Yeah. So we want to we wanna write a rule. We want to change this so that we can get as many adjectives as we want. But in this case, it's a little trickier than in the other cases because we don't want, we don't want as many determiners. Those only come one per noun phrase. And we also have to make sure that when we revise this rule, we don't screw things up so that these two guys, the determiner and the adjective, fail to come in that order. That's the only arrangement that's possible for them. So like, for instance, I couldn't do this. I couldn't decide, well, I'll just rewrite my noun phrase rules so that a noun phrase is before, as, as, as I said, something that has a noun in it always. Uh, and that's what this is going to turn out to be, as you'll see in a moment. And I, either side of that noun, we can get, well, prepositional phrases or complementizer phrases, or a determiner coming before. And then this, this could be something that holds just a noun and um, an adjective before it. This is recursive. And so, you know, we could, for instance, parse one of these noun phrases that has more than one adjective with these rules this way. We would say that we've got a noun phrase that's made up of just a noun. Before that is an adjective. Together they make a noun phrase. And of course, any noun phrase can, according to this rule, combine with an adjective to make another one. And this one, that's this, combines with a determiner to make the topmost. This would be one way of changing our rules that would get what we want. Okay. But it, but it, uh, but it, uh, it screws up. Here's why. Because those rules would also allow this. And this is bad, bad, no good, not possible, fat the the elf. Only one the in a noun phrase. And mm, determiners always before, not after adjectives. Do you see? how these two compete. So this says any noun phrase is something that can have an adjective before it. And this says any noun phrase is something that can have a determiner for it, before it. And these guys should be able to combine, therefore, this way or this way. Do you see the problem? Is it? OK, so how should I read this look? Saturday is tomorrow. Saturday is tomorrow. <laughs> do, you, do you see what I'm saying? Like, look, these rules say, oh, this guy could be built with this rule. Uh, this guy could be built with, well, this rule. Already, we've screwed up. Here's the solution. The problem with that solution was that we called the thing that this rule builds and this rule builds the same thing. And that's why they could switch in this lethal way back and forth. So we invent a new phrase. It's like a noun phrase, only mm, it doesn't have anything in it but adjectives and nouns. And this phrase is what stands inside honest-to-God noun phrases with determiners possibly preceding and other stuff possibly following. Okay? These things are called N bars. That's what this little thing is called, a bar. N bars. All right. And now this is the way the big fat elf looks. This noun phrase starts with a determiner, and it follows, like every noun phrase will, with an n bar. And an n bar can be an adjective followed by an n bar, and that is what this one is, and so is this one. 
and an n bar can be just a noun. And that's what this one is. And that's how we get big fat elf. It's not just that you can get as many adjectives uh, inside a noun phrase as you like. You can also get as many prepositional phrases following a noun, inside a noun phrase as you like. So right now, this is the sentence we can, we can give a representation for. The elf on the table danced. Here's a noun followed by a prepositional phrase. These two rules will give us this. This says, you can be a determiner followed by an n-bar followed by one prepositional phrase and be a noun phrase. And this n-bar can be just a noun. That's what we have. n-bar is just a noun, prepositional phrase following it. But these sentences are all fine and they differ from this one only in having another prepositional phrase added at the end. So we'll want to change this rule so that we get as many prepositional phrases as we want and here's the change. Not only do these n bars have nouns in them that are preceded by adjectives, but they can also, this rule now tells us, have nouns in them that are followed by prepositional phrases. And when they are, these two together, n bar, prepositional phrase, they will make an n bar. And that n bar itself can also be followed by a prepositional phrase, which makes an n bar. And that n bar, of course, too, could be something followed by a prepositional phrase, and so on. And the same thing is true for complementizer phrases inside noun phrases. It's possible to have an indefinite number of them following the noun too. And to capture that, we will write a new rule for n bars that allows complementizer phrases to follow them. And so this noun phrase, the claim that elves exists, that makes no sense, a noun followed by here two complementizer phrases, would get this parse. It's a noun phrase that starts here with a determiner and continues with an n-bar. And this n-bar, according to this rule, can and does in this instance have a complementizer phrase on the right, starts with an n-bar. This n-bar looks just like this one. It has an n-bar on its left-hand side that continues with a complementizer phrase. And this n-bar finally is the one that just has a noun. Sir. Um, can you have a complementizer phrase preceding a prepositional phrase? Um, um, I think that, you know, um, let's see, the true answer is yes, sometimes, but rarely. Mm -hmm. You can't. You can. You can, that's right, yeah. Yes, that's right. So if you look at these rules together, um, this says an n bar can be something that combines with a prepositional phrase. I mean, contains a prepositional phrase. And this rule says an n bar can be something that contains a complementizer phrase. And since the thing that precedes these two is just one of these, you should be able to find either ordering. And the truth is you can sometimes, but rarely. Um, so we'd have to kind of look at those. Here are the rules. You must know these. Not only must you know these, you must know how to use them. Could you turn me off? Can you turn the spots on for me too? Thank you. Secreted? Secreted? Okay, so um, let's do some. Yeah, now you, I taught you everything you need to know about syntax. Have you learned it? No. <laughs> Who said no? Who said no? You're too shy, the knowers? Did you raise your hand, ma'am? 
You. Yes, you. Not you. No. The one behind you. Yes. You didn't raise your hand? You know your, your neighbor raised your hand for you. Is she a friend of yours? Yeah. Not anymore. I can't use this big chuck. Okay, here's the sentence. The poor woman screamed at the teach, the teach, the teach, er. Grammatical string of words um, should be possible to show how they're grouped. Uh, so, um, according to the rules I've just taught you. So let's do that. The first step always in this is to figure out what parts of speech each of these words is because these rules are in terms of their parts of speech. What's the part of speech of the? Poor? Woman? Poor thing. Screamed? Now we're talkative. This at? Teacher? But what kind of noun? A great noun. A marvelous noun. Okay, now we have a clue. What we're looking at is a sequence that is determiner, adjective, noun, verb, preposition, determiner, noun. And now we have to figure out how do these group up according to our, according to our rules. Well, this is a sentence, okay? So this whole thing must be All right. So first job, where are those two, where's that major break? Between woman and screamed. Okay. This is what you'll, this will always be your first step. What are the two phrases that are being brought together to make a sentence? And um, here's some ways of helping you find that major break. The first is this. The second thing will always be a verb phrase. And verb phrases always start either with verbs or with auxiliary verbs. Okay? So when you scan from left to right, every time you hit a verb or an auxiliary verb, there's a potential place for the major break to be. There surely is the beginning of a verb phrase. All right? The second thing you can rely on is this. I've taught you phrases as strings of word types, but phrases are also phonological groupings. So it is possible to speak a phrase and put pauses on either side of it, and the result will sound natural to you. So for instance, if I say, the poor woman screamed at the teacher, with a big pause between the two, sounds okay. But if I say, the poor woman screamed at the teacher, sounds odd. You, you agree? Okay. So that's another piece of information you can use to locating which groups of strings, uh, which strings of words are phrases. Right? They just get out of hand. It's a funny expression, really. Uh, okay, so, good. Major break here. So this verb phrase starts with this verb. And now what happens? What else? What else should I do? Who wants to, oh, ma'am, you, yes, you, with the hand that never raised. She, she, she didn't, you didn't raise your hand, did you? And my question was, who here does not feel like they know what I've taught them? You didn't raise your hand, so I'm guessing. <laughs> In that case, I'll just pick on you, okay? Does that sound fair? You can use her as she seems clearly braver than you, a little less, more foolish maybe. Ma'am, so the two of you, tell me, how does this noun phrase look? 
How do I fit these three words into this noun phrase? What does a noun phrase look like, according to the rules I taught you? Does anyone have those in front of you? Oh, by the way, you'll find on the website a handout that has the phrase structure rules with some examples of them being used. You'll also find a 20-page lecture note that covers the material I did today. A noun phrase is always an end bar preceded by, potentially, a determiner. A noun phrase always looks like that. It's always got at most two things in it, determiner, end bar, and at least one thing in it, end bar. What's this one look like? This one is a determiner and an end bar. So these two words must fit inside the end bar. What do end bars look like? There's three ways, four ways, three or four ways that an end bar can look. An end bar can be just a noun. An end bar can be an adjective and another end bar, which can be just a noun. An end bar can be, were you laughing at me earlier too, ladies? No. And, and it's okay. You should feel safe in this class. <laughs> an end bar can be an end bar followed by a prepositional phrase or a complementizer phrase. And that end bar can be just an end. Or any of these end bars that have just been an N can be any of the other end bars I mentioned. This end bar is an adjective followed by an end bar. And this end bar is the one that has just an N. What does this verb phrase look like? What is this? This has a preposition in it. Prepositions are only ever found inside prepositional phrases. So if you see a preposition, you know there's a prepositional phrase. And the spot that prepositions are found in prepositional phrases is always the first spot. Some of those prepositional phrases have after the preposition a noun phrase. This one does. This noun phrase has a determiner in it and an end bar that has just a noun. Now what we want to do is know, how do these two go together? How do we get a prepositional phrase to be inside a verb phrase? Remember, you can have as many prepositional phrases as you like inside a verb phrase. And for that reason, what we said was that prepositional phrases always combine with verb phrases. That allows the verb phrase they combine with to have a prepositional phrase in them. Therefore, you can have as many as you like. But verb phrases can also just be verbs. And that's what this one is. Have a good weekend.